Hello and welcome back and that is right, it is time for Data News of the Week. The video where we take all the little blobs and blobs of news that involve data and squeeze it into a single video. A few interesting things to talk about this week, so let's crack on straight with it. There is an article over on Bleeping Computer uh, referring to a report over from the Russian website Commerzant talking about how there is a Russian data crisis now um, where there are uh, lots of big, big IT uh, companies out there basically reporting they've got two months of storage left ever since a lot of the big kind of hybrid and cloud data providers kind of basically called a day on any kind of communication and working and providing their services to Russia this has resulted in a big old crisis right now over there now I'm linking to all of the articles that I talk about as normal um, in the description but this bleeping uh, computer article here is particularly interesting because once you really break down to you know where they're going to have to sort out some of these sources from there's details on there about how um, you know they're going to have to go for some of the domestic level cloud services there and turn to some supplies that may not have been top tier let's face it China at the moment again they go into more detail on this I have not exactly been forthcoming on their support of Russia again it's been a bit grey overall there but um, uh, Huawei that company that America basically sanctioned and banned and turned their back on utterly over security concerns may be one of the ways in which Russia will try to get some more of that ever needed data but again I recommend not only going through the bleeping computer article that really summarizes things really really well but if you go over uh, to kamasant.ru they get a lot more detail there about the nature of the situation on data shortages there and this comes at the same time as um, a lot of um, cyber attacks are now being pointed at Russia, which again is a sentence I never thought I'd say that way around, um, with lots of different leaks coming out there. One of the latest ones, DDoS Secrets, um, uh, managing to uh, leak 360,000 documents. That's 820 gig of data spanning a huge gamut of information there that is being made readily available and no doubt being sorted through right now so again the cyber war ranges on and i've got to say some of the data they're being leaked out is fantastic next up another new product to talk about and it's over there at terra master it's just landed on their pages and if you thought that nine bay that we talked about the other week that was kind of strange well they've sat there and gone hold my beer and they've doubled down on it with this new 12 bay tower system here let's get that translated into english first there and this is pretty comparable to that nine bay we've talked about it's taking advantage if we go into the specifications again we've done a whole article already on this on nas compares detailing a lot of specifications so again it is taking advantage of the n5105 new uh, newer generation seller on processor there uh, on top of that it arrives with eight gig of memory upgradable to 32 gig again something i want to see for myself um it's got an m2 ssd upgrade slot inside uh that nvme slot there is pcie gen 3 times 4 and it has two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports there on the rear so again very similar to the previous device there but they're going ahead with that larger tower system now going by a 4x3 configuration again at the same time right now there is of course the tos uh, version 5 beta floating around that will come up later on uh, in the video we're going to be talking about that a little bit um, here in news of the week uh, on a different subject uh, but overall Again, they've really gone a unique route with these newer systems here, and I'm really looking forward to seeing, one, how noisy this system is, because I think that's going to be a deal breaker for some, but also that level of storage, just how well that CPU can handle that. This is the biggest Celeron system that I've ever seen in terms of overall storage, and that processor is very, very good, but whether it can handle 12 bays of storage comfortably with that amount of memory is something I'm really looking forward to finding out. Next up, alluding to something I talked about earlier in this week, that Linux uh, vulnerability that's recently been sewn up by Linux um, in that kernel 5.8 and above, uh, the dirty pipe vulnerability there. Um, I made a, a big video and an article about it earlier in the week and how this um, can impact NAS users and how different NAS brands are, whether they're affected or not, and if they are uh, affected by this, how they are dealing with it. I just wanted to give a quick update on that. Um, all the way through, again, it was very clear in the article I already talked about, 
Uh, Synology, for example, are completely unaffected because they use a, um, a fourth, uh, a 4.4 version kernel there. At the moment, it looks like QNAP are the only ones uh, with them utilizing the later released uh, 5.8 kernel and above there, and they are still investigating this. We've still not seen a full firmware patch there. On top of that, Acer Store were loud and proud, talking about how not only do they, are they not affected by this, but really going to quite loud length to make it clear to their user base this isn't something to be concerned with the only one i didn't have really much to talk about was terramast without knowing more about um what linux kernel they're running not only on their current gen 4 but also that gen 5 that's currently in beta and coming soon luckily it has been addressed in their forums there and they are not running uh, that uh, uh, fifth, uh, fifth revision kernel. Uh, in 4.1, they are running the 4.2 kernel. And in their newest generation, TOS 5, they're running 4.19. So although some users may be slightly sad to know they're not using the latest kernel of Linux, I think with regard to this uh, dirty pipe vulnerability, that may be good news overall there. And again, quick shout out to Datadog. They've got a, another article they've released um, since mine has come out. And they go into a little bit more detail there uh, about the Linux side of things, particularly for private server use. So I definitely recommend checking out that article and it will be linked in the description. And next up there is news on a brand new super fast SSD arriving in PSIE Gen 4. And that is the Vortex Redline, now reported to be, at least by their own reported specifications, to be the fastest PCIe Gen 4 SSD commercially available in the world. To go break down a little bit, it's those specifications, it's a thin line, but they are able to crack 7,415 megabytes per second sequential read. Now again, they dig into a little bit more detail on the pages, how they reach that performance threshold, and and I really am looking forward to getting this SSD here on the channel with any luck because I'm going to do the standard PS5 testing. But of course, review and PS5 benchmarks and Atto and AJA and stuff like that. But what's really intriguing about this SSD is, again, it's another one that's taken advantage of that InnoGrit controller. Now, I have talked about the InnoGrit a few times in independent videos as well as reviewing other InnoGrit SSDs such as the Patriot Viper and the uh, Gamix S70. And they've always had... Kind of some of the highest reported performance out there. If you go through some of the reviews and you can look at some of the architecture of it, the real big takeaway is kind of the architectural design differences. If we break it down into the close-up shots of that controller, it's built very differently. And that Rainer controller, the 5236, allows performance to definitely be higher than some of the stuff we've seen out there from Fireson. It's not perfect. There are some areas where it is a little less than its contemporaries, with the durability being a fraction less than the likes of WD, Samsung, and Seagate, of course. But in terms of overall read performance, it really is something else there. Uh, the overall performance in the right portion of events is a little lower than the other ones out there. Again, that's something we have noticed before with the Integrit controller in the past. But this uh, Mushkin SSD is definitely one I'm hoping to have on the channel very, very soon. So do stay tuned for that. But this has been Data News of the Week. A little bit of new product, a little bit of news. And overall, just lots of stuff chugging along in the world of data. Again, I will see you on the next news video. Click like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next week.